working with Mac Miller, rest in peace, blew my mind. Probably one of the best studio sessions I've experienced. Um, I was living in Malibu at the time and he was right up the street off the coast um, in Brentwood. And um, my homegirl Kelly, shout out to Kelly and Chris Clancy, who managed him, um, was like, yo, what's up, Charles? You, you know, we was talking about music. I was like, yo, you know, I got some heat for him. What's up with him? He, she's like, yo, go pull up, go come to the house. So I went to his house. This dude got a real studio in the crib. So I started playing the music and I played his beat. And instantly he was like, yo, I want that right there. I want that. He's like, yo, can I get that? Let me get that. So I was like about to give him an MP3. He was like, no, I need the session. I need the session. Lucky enough, bro, my computer with the Renaissance is right there. So I bounced the shit right there for him. You know, I watched that man take my session, put it in Pro Tools, loop the shit, pull out a guitar, play a melody on top of my shit, get in the booth, cut the vocal, sit back, edit it, echo, put some extra shit on it, call his boys from fucking, from, from Pittsburgh, had them come add some shit to it. Yo, bro, the dude, the brew dude was a beast, man. Super talented, man. And I, I mean, just not just rapping, pulling out instruments and playing them. So I'm like, hold the fuck up. I never even knew all this shit. And then he had an authentic way. Like he had an ear for music where he used the right mix engineer, like mixed out bits by Ali and certain engineers that he worked with. They were just really fucking dope, man. And he he understood the, the, the importance of it. Cause a lot of artists don't give a fuck who mixed they shit. They just won they shit. But I'm here like, nah, you need this guy. You need Caviar, you need Jason Joshua. You need, you know what I'm saying? You need fucking, you know what I'm saying? This guy to mix your record, the not to beats, you know? And and a lot of people don't know that certain engineers provide that sound and, and you need it. And that, that's how it went, man. I tried to sign J. Cole to G unit, man, and, and uh, it didn't happen. That was the last person I tried to sign there before I left. And it didn't happen. So we did records. I did the record with him and Yo Gotti on I Am album, uh, Cold Blood. I produced that with Kanai Finn. So he he was still on speed dial. Like I would call him. You still, yo, I was a fan. I want to. I would have signed him the same day I met him, but I you know, had someone that like that had to approve shit. You know what I'm saying? So he wasn't. He didn't see it at that time. Eventually he did. But when he went in the room with Jay-Z and Mark Pitts, they saw it that same day and they signed him that same day. Just imagine, man, if he was a part of my my pantheon of the, the dudes I was signing of the legends and shit, he was right there. I brought him, like, I seen it. I heard the mixtape and I knew it was it, bro. My boy Mike Rooney, shout out to Mike Rooney, brought him to 50 Crib. He was at the crib, bro. He was at the crib. Even Yale knew that shit was hot, man. Like, people knew. And motherfuckers just, we was just in the cloud a little bit. At least not me, but that shit was supposed to be a done deal, man. I think he's not focusing on production because these last few albums had all the, Ill Mind was on it. There were other producers. There was a lot of old men and a lot of other producers. So he didn't bear the weight. Um, probably the more recent had him on it. Um, yo, honestly, yo, it, we creatives, man. And um, once you start making money, Time is all you need, man. This is by time, right? So he could just be in that studio making the best shit possible. Just gotta, you're gonna get some misses and you gotta flush them out until you get the right ones.